Welcome to Sipping on Excellence. This is Coach KJ, and I'm here with my man, my dude, the Doc. And this is where we will be discussing the exceptional that is absolutely attainable. My friends, here's to living that extraordinary life. Cheers. <laughs> I look like a real sound engineer. Yeah, over right, here. You're right. I'm He's clicking like, buttons and But you should have seen me. You were like waiting to hit the button, and I was like, Oh, you waiting for me to hit record. Oh, my bad. <laughs> this is this is why we have checks and balances. We have, this thing's gonna get recorded on three separate devices. Y'all will still get a podcast. <laughs> we gonna put it out no matter what. It's coming out regardless. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Sipping on Excellence, that where you do. get the raw, the unedited, the real talk. Rah! Every week, every Wednesday, <laughs> to our family out there in YouTube land, to our family out there in the podcast world, let's Fam. go, fam. What's uh, up, yo? Um, Ooh. dude, another week. I like it. Another week. We had a great live this morning. For those of you who miss our live on IG at eleven o'clock every Saturday, um, yeah, we talking about stuff. We talk about stuff. This week, we talked about attention-seeking behavior. And for you attention seekers out there, y'all might want to go back and go on uh, at Lionel Hunt or uh, at SOE underscore podcast and listen to today's live. Mm -hmm. Listen to this week's live because it uh, it'll be up there. Just take a look at it. <laughs> yeah, we ruffle some they, feathers. There's going to be some people out there that are going to feel some kind of way, but they know we talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's that simple. Yeah. And man. it's gonna feed into today's topic. Oh, man, seeking attention, man. That's a it's a tough one. That's a tough one. Because I think in some capacity we all want some level of attention. But damn, when they out there being thirsty and not <sighs> hungry, you know? I think people don't even know the difference between being thirsty and hungry. They think we're talking about food. Right. Right. That's a damn shame. If you Check don't know yourself. if you don't know. You're the problem. Stay hungry, not thirsty. <laughs> thirsty. <laughs> Man, but it's been uh, it, it was it was a good one today. Got a lot of feedback. Um, you guys, again, just want to plug it. Y'all should check us out every week. If you're not looking at us on YouTube. You can even just listen to us. Listen to us, man. You guys will you'll learn something. At the very least, you'll be entertained. If you disagree, you'll still be entertained. Right. And right. The whole concept is for you guys to give us your thoughts on what, you know, on what we're talking about, because we can come back and have this dialogue with you. And those of you who are saying you want to have more of this dialogue with the podcast, got to tune in on Saturday mornings. Tune in on Saturday. Listen on Wednesday to the podcast. Yeah. DM us, message us, hit us up. Let us know what's going on. What's that? Where are you at? And if what you, you doing? Yeah. And if you, if you, if you hit us up and let us know kind of your thoughts, We'll talk about it on the live. Yeah. And then we'll let you know ahead of time. We're going to talk about it on the live. If you guys give us something specific you want us to go live with so you can interact. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's going to be on the podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, that, it's that simple. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's, 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 it's something that we want to continue to build and want to continue to grow the live audience because eventually this podcast will be done live. This is correct. You know, and y'all ain't ready. We are fools. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's an, coming on our lives is an opportunity to engage, be in that moment, get some stuff off your chest, you know, put some fix on it. I don't know. We acknowledge everybody that shows up. Exactly. You know, you exactly. got a question, we try to read them and kind of get after them. Yeah. Um, With our bad eyes. Yes. We can't see shit. <laughs> Get a teleprompter that makes it big. <laughs> big right. old screen. Yeah, screen. Yeah. Hey, like this one up here. <laughs> Looking back like, oh. <sighs> shit. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. I decided to represent today. You see, you see, you mm -hmm. see, you see. Little, little LA. I hear little you little boy. boys in the hood. Boys in the hood are always hard. Come talking that trash. We'll, we'll pull, pull your card. <laughs> ain't nothing in life but to be, be legit. legit. Don't fool me, boy, because I ain't, ain't saying shit. Jip, jip, eh. 
<laughs> Man, I remember buying that CD. When music was music. I remember buying the CD. The CD. Yeah. And that was a big deal. Yeah. That transformation from going from the tapes to the, the CD. Ta- yeah. yeah. Most people who are listening to us don't even know what a cassette yeah. tape is. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know about the hurt quick. Push record and push record and play at the same time. <laughs> right. When you try to record. <laughs> when, when, when you, you try say, to catch it on the radio. When, when you try to <laughs> radio's about to play your song. You got to catch it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. hope they don't, and hope they don't cut off the end with a commercial, <laughs> or, uh, or hearing some random DJ over talking your intro. <laughs> man, right? the good old days. Man. Y'all don't, hey, y'all don't know nothing about oh, that. And you did it on your component set. Yes, dude. <laughs> I told you when I was in college, I had a CD, not a CD, but a cassette tape changer. Wow. Somebody, I fa- somebody found one and gave it to me, and they had five cassettes. And <laughs> I'm sorry if I dated y'all in college. <laughs> I'm about to put it out there. I had every single Prince slow jam on CD. Yeah. And, I mean, on, on tape. Yeah. And it just no, went from I, one I, tape I, to the other. It went front to back, front to back, and oh, yeah. five hours worth of music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it was a it was a it was a dropper. <laughs> Yo mama, boy, if she only knew. She did good. <laughs> I ain't in jail. <laughs> this is true. This is true. A lot of things are happening now. I ain't in jail and she retired early. Oh, yeah. The rest in between don't matter. <laughs> Acceptable. <laughs> Above acceptable, yeah, yeah. Oh man, how was your week, man? Busy week, man. Busy week, and that was the sort of the the impetus of my post yesterday. Ooh, he said impetus of his post. So, I did a post yesterday on IG. If you guys haven't checked it out, and it basically said, you know, talking about those of us who were in the service industry, mm-hmm. and I basically outright said, and I told this to a patient. I am here to provide a service. I am not here to serve you. And if you don't know the difference, oh, I said, I, I said, I'm not here to serve you. And I said, know the difference. We and they looked talked, at me like, yeah, we talked about that on the podcast. Once. Yeah. And yeah. it's just people think, and this is mostly or partly the demographics of where I work. You know, mm-hmm. I'm working in Beverly Hills, Beverly Hills adjacent, however you want to look at it. And there are certain people, you know, most patients are grateful. There are certain people that feel like I owe them something. I owe them my time. I owe them my skill, you know, and yeah, I'm not here to serve you. I don't play that shit. This shit's a privilege, Mm -hmm. you know, and too many times you see it in hospitality. You see it in the food service industry. I can't stand it when people mistreat servers in a restaurant. Dude, irks me to know just end. because they their title says server they're not they're they're providing a service to you correct. they're not your fucking servant correct you know and so when i see you mistreat them because they made a mistake or whatever it may be you ain't perfect either mf you know you're not you showing your ass and letting you letting them know that you are not perfect And that sense of entitlement, who gave that to you? Because you're spending money, because you got money in your pocket, because you were born of a certain quote unquote class. And get the fuck out of here. You know, (laughs) it's it's and it rubs me wrong when people try to come at me that way. I'm paying you for a service. No, your insurance company is and they're not paying me that well. (laughs) And they're definitely not paying me. For example, patient calls and they're rude to my office. I won't see them. Their doctor tried to send them to me and I was like, nah, did they? They hung up on you because you told them there were some issues. Don't even call them back. They don't get an appointment. Send a, send a note to their doctor saying they need to send them to somebody else because I refuse. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to serve you. I'm not here to, to swallow my shit so you can, yeah. because you're going to pay me a couple bucks to see me in the office. Nah, man. I'm too far beyond that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. And you know, I deal with it as well. I've dealt with oh, it. Oh, for sure. And I've... And I've done a lot of checking. <laughs> yeah. I, I, had to, I had to be raised up off of a client one time. Dude, because if you don't, 
if you don't check it, it's going to happen again. Yeah. Because then they feel like, oh, they're, you're feeding into their need to be served. And they're like, oh, he accepted that? Oh, I'm going to talk to him any kind of way. All right. <laughs> you know, the funny thing about- He maybe didn't hear you the first time. Say it again. <laughs> the funny thing about the one person that I'm speaking of, Yeah, <laughs> I've seen pictures of him as a recent. It is not good. Not pretty, huh? Oh, not pretty at all. I had him on the front end when everything was actually okay. Yeah. Now? Ooh. Oh, boy. It's a hard <laughs> check waiting to happen, bro. Hey, man. I think if you, if you're a shitty individual, what's inside of you feels that. And you don't do well. Shitty people don't do well. No. They, I mean, they just, they don't. They physically don't do well. They put up a front like they do, but they, they don't. They can't possibly. No. You know, and so I don't feel bad for them. No. If you're a shitty individual, that's your business. That's your bad. And they seek more shitty. Yes. And so one thing that I keep learning, not just this week, but every week, I learn a little bit more my value, my worth, and the difference between serving and being of service. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, I have to keep reminding myself that I don't always have to be available. You know, no. took me a while to took me a while to get to that point. You know, I I have to serve me. Yeah, that's it. And you know, actually, what is of better service for you is to remove yourself even further because it'll force a level of exclusiveness about you, and people will want you more. It's not, oh well, I'll just take this this time. No, no, don't take it this time. No, no. They'll take, you know what? I can see the whole idea. Oh, I can see you in two weeks on this day at this time. Well, I don't know. Well, that's the time I can. So you need to put in your appointment if you need to see me. You know, and it's funny because patients will come see me and they'll tell me, oh, it took me three months to get an appointment. And they're like, so I'm happy I'm here. I'm like, all right, cool. And I'm talking to them. And when we're done, they're like, man took me three months to get this appointment and you know 15 20 minutes we're done and i'm like you got your questions answered right did you get or do you have any other questions no but it was just a quick visit Mm -hmm. i waited three months and it's just a quick visit well what else you need to talk about yeah you know they i'm not here to this isn't a social visit i'm not here to just sit here and talk about your dog and all that shit no i'm here to take care of you and if I can treat your problem and tell you what's wrong with you in five minutes why do I need to spend 50 right when I have to tease through your issues then we spend more time yeah if you come in and say I stubbed my toe and my toe hurts I'm gonna be like your toe hurts because you stubbed your toe right right I (laughs) I I'm, I'm a big believer of quality over quantity yeah I'd rather put in effort to do what's necessary and do what's right and most beneficial than just feed it a whole bunch of fluff and, oh, well, let's do this exercise. Let's do this exercise. Oh, well, let's talk about, you know, the cats and the dogs. And then, no, what's the, what's paramount? What's going on? What's deep? What's deep rooted? Uh, or what do you see? Right. What, do we, what do we need to see bigger? Right. And here's what gets me when, I'm having these conversations with patients. I ask, I ask every single one, you have any other questions? No, cool. They leave and then they have a ton of questions. And I always tell them, if you come up with questions later, just email me or whatever. <laughs> they then proceed to tell me, well, you didn't answer all my questions when you were in the office. Well, you couldn't think of them when you were sitting in front of me. What do you, I asked you, do you have, I say this every single time before I stand up and walk out. Do you have any other questions I can answer? No. Cool. I'm not going to sit there and wait for you to think about whatever. No, I got other people to see. Yeah. The reason why it took me three months, because my busy. <laughs> yeah. One of the things I start doing with coaching is starting off. I always ask, what's going to make this an extraordinary conversation? All right. So we have to dial, good one. We have to dial in to what that extraordinary is going to be for that day. What's expect? What are you what, expecting? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I dig that. Yeah. I might steal that one. <laughs> and I might, I really, we'll walk in and be like, all right, look, before we get started, what is going to make this a good experience for you? 
well, I want you to be able to tell me what's wrong. Cool. We may not get that answer today. We may have to do some stuff to figure that out. I'm stealing that. Good looking out. <laughs> See, I'm getting coached in the middle of the podcast, y'all. <laughs> I'm just saying. Because yeah. my approach is a little different, but I like that. Yeah. I like because that. Because I'm, I'm, I'm forcing direction. Instead of just walking in being like, all right, tell me what's wrong. Yeah, what's going on with you? What are we going to talk about today? Yeah, that, that doesn't feed. No, we want, we want extraordinary. What's going want to make this experience great? Yeah, we want beyond normal. You deal with normal every day. You come to coaching to be better than normal. You know, you come to the trainer to be better than y'all. Y'all hear that? <laughs> yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all hear what's going on right now, right? If y'all ain't taking note, these are free coaching sessions. Notice I said free because you can tune in for free. Yeah. Yeah. They ain't paying yeah. attention. Uh. Y'all ain't. Y'all ain't. <laughs> just, go back and replay this. Y'all need to listen to some of this because that's free coaching right there. That yeah. shit costs money. I know. <laughs> You know, is money well spent? Yeah. Y'all need to. Yeah, yeah. I ain't plugging him no more. <laughs> no, I yeah, am plugging man. him because he's the truth. Yeah, but between that and just intention, man. Yeah. You know, I, I, I just can't sit there and like, okay, we're gonna, like when I'm training, we're not gonna sit there and just do a whole bunch of arbitrary exercise. No. What's going on with your body? What's your, you, you? What's yeah. the first thing I always ask? What'd you do this week? How you, you feeling? What'd you do? How, uh, yeah, how's your back feeling? How's your body feeling? What's going on? That okay. way I can. And then the next thing was, what'd you do this week? Mm-hmm. Always thinking. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's how it should be. Oh, yeah. Um, I want to get into you. What did, what was your week like? What did you learn about coach? What did you come across this week? Um, what I came across this week was just a continuation of manifesting just this quality energy and vision in my head of what it, everything looks like. And as I've been doing that, things have just been coming slowly, but surely conversations, whatever I've reached out to people. I haven't talked to in a long time, just send them video message. Yeah. So now they have the voice, they have the video, yeah. the visual. So they're, they're getting different stimulus and they're yeah. like, I need to talk to this dude. So I've had a lot of return calls and, you know, just catching up. They know what I'm doing now. That's where, that's where it starts. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing is, on the back end, you never know what's snowballing. Right. You don't know what people are doing in the background once they hang up the phone with you. Right. But now you've brought this little memory yeah. to the forefront. Yeah. Yeah. I dig it. Yeah. Between that and um, the idea of either a course or a book is kind of coming together. Okay. The concept. Of okay. What exactly I'm going to do with it? It's either one oh, or the other. Oh shit, y'all! <laughs> Coach KJ's <laughs> pearls are about to be out. <laughs> I get them at random. I don't know about y'all, but I get them at random. So, yeah, man. But let's yeah. get to this drink so we can get to these. What's wrong with y'all? Oh boy. <laughs> well, the drink today is it's called a blue 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 we kind of took away from the bluegrass a little bit. A little modified bluegrass. A little modified bluegrass. So bluegrass is a ounce and a half of bourbon, your quality bourbon, your good rye bourbon, um, uh, pineapple juice, an uh, ounce of pineapple juice, and an ounce of lemon juice. And it was supposed to have, it was supposed to, <laughs> it was supposed to. <laughs> Have, have some cherry liqueur in the it. Maraschino the cherry maraschino. liqueur. Yeah. yeah. I don't have all that in my house. So. so we did a little drop of grenadine. And set it off, y'all. Yes, sir. So um, y'all need to go ahead and somebody asked earlier, where do you find these recipes? Look at them in the write-up. If y'all read instead of just listening as well, you'll learn. Cheers, brother. Cheers, Cheers to you guys as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I, could, I could dig that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's good. I got a couple of what's wrong with y'all, and then we'll get into because this is this is all going to play into what we're talking about today. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the ones that came across, and I probably sent it to you earlier, and this right here is about how not everybody should have kids. <laughs> did you did you see this one? I sent you. I didn't see him. 
Basically, the headline reads, a boy, five, high on cocaine, fatally shoots his 16 year old Oh, I saw that one. Oh, my yeah. God. And who, his, who was found in his autopsy to have marijuana in his system. And when they arrested the two parents, they found blue pills within reaching distance of the five-year-old that had fentanyl. fentanyl. Yeah. You know, and I'm just like, damn, man, for real? Now, the question is, should those parents be locked up? 100%. Is there a question? Do they get locked up for murder if they didn't commit the murder? Yeah. Yeah. I think think second degree. Yeah. It wasn't premeditated. Lack of responsibility, man. And I think the five-year-old gets let off the hook. Yeah. He loses his parents, but he doesn't go to prison. He doesn't go to jail. He doesn't go to juvie. None of that. It was an accident. Yeah. Under the influence. Under the influence. Let alone. Dude. What's wrong with y'all? You know? And, but yet, you want to do away with abortion. You want to do away with all this stuff that is forcing these young kids who shouldn't really have parents. I mean, shouldn't really be parents. Forcing them to have kids. You know? I mean, it's just, it's kind of insane, right? Here's a big what's wrong with y'all that, um. I'm going to let y'all just sit with. I just think it's stupid. All this madness, and it's marketing stupid. Mm -hmm. The Barbie movie. Okay. And the play with everybody having to wear pink to go watch the movie. And like what I, I, I don't know the big deal as to why, why it's such a big deal. It's a movie. It's a Barbie. It's a Mattel toy. What the f? The the part that trips me out is, and if you tell me you went and saw it, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> the part that trips me out is is okay. Barbie was the at that time, especially when she first came out, she was the quintessential perfect woman. You yeah, know, blonde. Kind of had blue eyes, we think, mm-hmm. maybe. Yeah. You know, tall white woman, then with boobs. Yeah. And a butt. Margot Robbie. Mm-hmm. Basically. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> 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 Which is why it's her movie. Yeah. Um, but she was supposed to be the uh, quintessential woman. You know, she was supposed to be the start of whatever, the ideal woman. Yeah. How has that played out? Through society so far. Well, and the reason why I bring this up, because I saw this post where it said this woman, and I sent this to you earlier, canceled a date with her boyfriend because he refused to wear pink to go to the movie. People take shit too far. Yeah. Like, he, in my, I mean. You know what? And that's a, we're going to get into the the toxicity of that bullshit. I I was going to (laughs) say, was good for that? Good for her. Good for him. Right, but he escaped early. Yeah, you know, and <laughs> and it wasn't enough that he's like, I'm gonna go sit through that bullshit with you. I'm gonna go sit through this movie with you. I'm not gonna call the movie bullshit because it made 155 million the first weekend. Yeah, you know, so something must be right about it. But it's not high on the list of most dudes saying I want to go see the Barbie movie. Yeah, so. The fact I mean, my that he, wife went. She went to go see. Yeah, her. I was going to go see it. With yeah, her. the fact that he's willing to go with you, if he says I don't want to go buy any pink shirt. I mean, some of us have pink in the closet, fine, but I'm not going to go wear it just because I'm going to the movie, you know. And if I don't want feel like wearing pink that day, I can't go to the movie with you. That's that bullshit right there. That right there. That's that bullshit, you know. Um, so touchy about it. <laughs> Well, no, I just, I think, I think, I think it's just dumb, you know, and I saw another thing with California and California Assembly. California's getting special, man. And it's been special, but this woman was talking about, and I I sent it to you and what they were talking about was basically... Transgender men. Okay. I'm sorry, transgender women. Okay. 
And this woman was making a point that was saying, you know, talking about just the healthcare and having different things. And she was like, if you have a uterus, you have a period, your uterus lining sloughs off every month and you mm -hmm. comes down through your cervix, exits your vagina as a period. You're, you're born with that capability going forward. Correct. You're a woman. And you are female. No. And she said it properly. She's like, you are female. You know, so she wasn't even toxic about the, the man, woman. It's not man. It's, that was a man, woman. She said you're female. female. Yeah. The what, senator, the senator went off and somebody else went off saying that she was being transphobic. And that by saying that a female has a uterus, blah, 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 whatever. And that was just being bigoted towards the trans community. What, no, what, 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 what senator? Who was this? I'm going to tell you right you, now. You got to tell me who the senator was. To be clear that these same uh, homophobic, transphobic organizations uh, opposing this bill today also oppose uh, uh, equality. Skinner. Okay. You guys heard that. So he was saying that being opposed to this bill, that whatever the bill was, saying that it's homophobic, transphobic, when she was talking about and saying it was a bigoted language to say that females have a period and men don't. <laughs> That's that bullshit right there, yeah, dude. Man. That is that. I'll tell you, first of all, you know one of the things I learned? Nobody has Webster in his life. No. Nobody, no. Nobody's no, nobody knows who Webster is. <laughs> you know who Webster is. Last name dictionary. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you. Start looking up words. What's wrong with y'all? Identify exactly what that word means. He didn't say woman. What he identifies as or she. It's female. What her, and I'm sorry. How she shows up phenotypically. You her body, don't have. Organs. If you don't have ovaries, uterus, cervix, vagina, you don't have a period. So stop talking about you get period cramps and you get you have a menstrual cycle. Right. Sorry, I can't. Right, that's right. not being transphobic. That's just facts. Yeah. I don't care how you identify. Identify how you want. <laughs> it doesn't affect me. I will. I will come at you however you want me me to come at you. Well, you're a doctor. You have to. You have to address these things from. I got to address from the physiologic physiolog standpoint. Physiological standpoint. Yeah. What's going on inside? Your psychology, your, your psychology, I will address to keep you happy, but I still need to understand what you were born as. Yeah. Here's a question. Mm. How do you, what do you feel about being called a cis man? A what? A cis man. What the hell is that? <laughs> That's why he's my dog. So. A what? Hold on. <laughs> I'm about to explain it. You about, I'm about to, to explain it. You about to explain it to explain me? It. You better explain this to me. Put some spec behind my name. Cisgendered men and cisgendered women mm. are women and men who were born male or female and identify with their, what they were born as. So you are now being, you're not just a man. You're now a cis man. C-I-S. So here's the funny shit. Why is it that you just can't be a man, which you've been your whole life, and a trans man be a trans man? Right. Why must I change how I am identified because you change what you identify as? That's what that's that BS that I was talking about. It's that I don't know what the culture is. So I'm just gonna as I'm in the culture, I'm just gonna keep changing the dialogue every single day. I'm talking about yeah. the community. Yeah. Because what happens is their identity is like all over the place. They're and trying to figure it out. People's identity changes and so I can't change I'm not gonna remember and especially if you don't tell me. Right. 
If you don't tell me how you identify, or how about this? If you identify as a woman, or better yet, you identify as a man, but yet you're a, you were born female, but you tell me I want to be identified as a woman, and I mean, you, you want to be identified as a man, I have to accept that. Yes. But yet, I can't tell you I don't want to be identified as cis. I just want to be identified as a man. Why can't you accept that? It's too hard for him. But it's... it's because it's... You know why it's too hard for him? Because it's simple. It's just it is versus I have to create something that sounds a little bit more complicated. It sounds sexier this way. It sounds different this way. It makes everybody... You know, compart- it was compartmentalizing everyone. Well, this is, th- and this gets us into our topic for today. So, Coach and I, we talk about it all the time, but we never, you know, we touch on it in different podcasts and we touch on it in our lives. We want to talk about toxic behavior, mm. you know? And first of all, he and I both hate the word toxic. Mm. There's two words that he and I both hate, and they both start with T's mm. toxic and triggered. Oh, you put them together. Oh, and you put them together. You got a toxic trigger. (laughs) Oh, I got a cramp. (laughs) Kidney shot. (laughs) And so this, this, this topic that we're talking about and this, this particular thing that we just started talking about just now with the being identified as something, you wanting somebody to identify you as one way, but yet you won't accept the way they want to be identified is toxic. Since y'all want to talk about toxic behavior, that's not healthy behavior. Anything that's not healthy is toxic, right? I'm going to look up the definition of toxic so we get this shit right. Thank you. You know, because... Hey, can you call Webster? Tell him to tell us what's going on. So we're just going to look at the word toxic. A toxic person is anyone who, whose behavior adds negativity and upset to your life. Yeah, I don't like that because that doesn't tell me what toxic the word definition means. So the the definition of toxic is poisonous. Correct. Very harmful or unpleasant in a pervasive or insidious way. Like a toxic relationship, a toxic substance, a poisonous substance mm-hmm. that creates harm. It's like an aerial virus. It's toxic. I drink liquid Drano, it's toxic. Right. You know, I take fentanyl, it could be toxic if I take too much, if I, whatever. So now that you all understand what truly toxic means, let's talk. Let's get into it. Let's fucking get into it. Yeah. You know, so like I was saying about the, and, and, and the reason why I brought up the whole cisgendered thing, because there was a big controversy about a guy who didn't want to be called cis. Like, why can't I just be called? Oh, Piers Morgan said it too. He's like, why can't I just be a man? You can identify whatever you want to identify as. But if I just tell you I'm a man, I am not a cis man. You're telling me that's transphobic. Now, here's the thing is me being wanted to be called just a man toxic or you trying to force me to take on the pronouns the 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 the, the, the not even the pronoun the piece in front mm-hmm. sis is that toxic is toxic behavior trying to force your beliefs and opinions on somebody else and make them accept what you believe because right. you want them to believe what you believe well, especially if you're identifying, if you're forcing something because you're identifying something as quote unquote negative, but you're forcing something else on them, which you're deciding that it is not negative, but you're forcing a bad behavior, you're forcing a behavior on someone else. Yeah. That's negative yes. in itself. So you're forcing or creating a toxic environment by forcing your energy onto someone else. And what ends up happening? What happens with toxic? Toxic is we now are like what this podcast is. We're having a conversation about this word. That's what toxic is. Yes. The fact that we have to have this conversation. Exactly. And if we're, if we're. Your mouth scans. You identify a certain way. 
Mm -hmm. It's toxic to tell me I have to identify in the way you want me to identify. No. Right. I identify how the hell I want, just like you do. Yeah. You told me that this is where you identify. Okay, cool. cool. I'm here for it. And so because I identify as trans, you have to identify as cis. No. 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 Because I identify as non-binary, you have to identify as cis. No. I'm a man. (laughs) Is is that simple? Yeah. You know, and these are these are some of the 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 toxic traits that we're talking about. And one thing that he and I can't stand is toxic masculinity. You never hear people walking around saying toxic femininity, but everybody screams out toxic toxic masculinity when they don't like something a man does. Everything that a man represents, at some point in time, somebody calls it toxic if it's not what they like. Right. But they want aspects of the behavior of a man. They just don't want to own the man. They just have to do away with the man. Well, because what they're saying is everything masculine is toxic. Mm -hmm. And that is why we've talked about this before. That is why we're developing a whole generation of less masculine men. Mm -hmm. And then they're saying, well, because men are less masculine, women are having to step up and become more masculine. Well, no, stop calling men toxic. You know, If a man is a, if a guy is a guy's guy, I consider myself a man's man. I consider you a man's man. We just, we have certain values where like provide, protect, we work hard, we go to the gym, we do all these things. Comfortable in our own skin. Yes. Bottom line. We look at a woman, she's hot, we notice. (laughs) You know? Yeah. We're not evil about it, but is it a toxic man trait? Like I had somebody told me, it was toxic and patronizing for me to open a door. I can get my own door. That's a toxic man trait. And I was like, since when is being a gentleman being toxic? Are you fucking kidding me? This is, dude, this is the shit we're dealing with. And the thing is, as men, I think the biggest thing that we have to do is really dial back and own up to who we are and not let those moments ruin the aspect of who we are as men. Yes. Because what happens is it happens once. It happens twice. Well, you know what? Fuck it. I ain't opening no doors for no women no more because, you know, I don't want to get. You know what? You just need to stop hanging around those type of people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, line. Yeah, but you, you don't you, know. You don't you know. You don't know. You don't know. And, you know, it's, it's so crazy that they call these, these certain traits toxic. You know, I mean, it is absolutely insane. But they're deciding on them on, it's like Johnny on the spot. You know what I mean? They're deciding in that moment, yeah, I don't like it like this. Or, and this is, has nothing to do with you as a man. It has everything to do with what has happened to them with other men. Oh, and here's the funny shit. If you say, why don't you like men? Because men are toxic. Explain. Nobody explains it. Ever. Nobody can tell you this is what is toxic about a man. So I can tell you if a guy if I if a guy makes a statement that says at some point in time all women need to be led. Oh, that's a toxic statement. But then you go and say, Well, what do you like in your man? I like for him to be a leader. But because I said, you said it. a woman needs to be led. Yeah. At some point in time, Correct. that's toxic. Now, I will tell you, a man leading you, not toxic. A man trying to own you, toxic. Mm-hmm. Know the difference. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. you saying you want a man to be a certain way is okay. But if a man says, I'm a certain way, it's toxic. And we're saying the same shit. You know, it's just, it makes no, it makes no sense to me. No, uh, as they say these days, make it make sense. Yeah. And ladies, just so you know, y'all do some toxic behavioral shit too. We were talking about it on, a lot. we were talking about it on the podcast earlier today. 
on the, the I mean on the on the live earlier today and the gym scenario that's some toxic shit where all these people and it's really coming up big now where people are starting to take notice and girls are getting kicked out of the gym and all this they're setting up these tripods they're filming themselves and they're trying to catch men looking at them and then posting oh look at this guy looking at me what are you doing why are you watching me girl i'm walking by you're in my eye shot. Sorry. So, so isn't that bait and switch? Yes. Isn't that um, toxic? Yes. Toxic as shit. You're going out of your way. So in other words, you're not there to do the work. You're there to call out men. Yeah. Another thing, toxic behavior. I was showing you this clip. This dude takes his girlfriend out for dinner for her birthday, buys her a gift. She brings 17 of her friends and expects him to pay for them all. When he refuses, she calls him broke. It's toxic. That right there, that behavior is toxic. When you have expectations of a man to do shit for you, he doesn't owe you anything. Instead of you accepting the fact that he's doing something nice for you, it's toxic to get on him because he didn't do exactly what you wanted. That's that bullshit. Have you ever been called toxic? Yeah. Yeah. And explain why? Nope. Couldn't explain it. Yeah. See, that's just toxic. It's it's it flows off people's lips so easily that they don't even know what it means. Yeah. You know? And so I listened to this interview and a guy was like, you know, talking about communication. He's like, Do you expect a man to read your mind? Well, yeah. Well then that's and if he doesn't, you get upset, right? Yeah. That's toxic. That's toxic. We're not mind readers and neither are you. I'm yeah. talking to y'all out there. Yes. Which is the reason why they struggle to continue to develop in a relationship. A man should just know what I want. I don't have to say it. Really? That's toxic. That's behavior. toxic. That's toxic behavior because yeah. now you're bringing poison into a relationship because you're not working. Being lazy, toxic behavior. <laughs> and relationships require putting in effort yes on both parts life requires that effort and if you're not doing it and you're just if you're always expecting something from somebody else and you're not doing the same sweetie you're fucking toxic yeah you know it's a toxic behavior that especially a lot of women do mm -hmm. so let's say Men get a divorce, they move on. Whatever. You know, move on however they need to move on. Sometimes when women get divorced, they spew their behavior onto their friends. Oh, for sure. Well, maybe he's out doing what mine did. Maybe he's out doing X, Y, and Z. Why is he not home now? Why are you not with him? Why is he? He's always on a business meeting. Probably because he's doing business. You know what's toxic? I've, I've, I've seen that two times. Have you seen this? And divorced. Have you, have you seen this? People are in a relationship. Mm -hmm. The issues they're having with their dude or things they dislike about their dude, mm -hmm. they publicly make it known. They're still with them. Mm -hmm. Like I saw a post where this woman was on a girl's trip. I don't know. I don't know if I sent you this post. I you saw, saw that. And she's her. She's talking about how her husband calls her, FaceTime her all the time. He misses her. So every time he, hey babe, guess what I did today? Guess what I'm doing? And she's mocking him. Basically, it was a post about being a beta male, whatever the fuck that means, just a simp. Mm -hmm. But she's on posting on Instagram. Mocking him about, hey, babe, you know, good for you. And she's trying to mock his voice. Oh, I, this is what I made for dinner. She's like, ah, good for you, babe. You know, just, oh, babe, I took the dog out. Oh, good for you. You know, she's like, stop texting me. Stop. Instead of just saying, you know what? It's really cool that my husband misses me when I'm gone. Mm -hmm. She's blasting him on social media. Also, think about this. Dudes don't do that shit. If... He was not this person, and now that now is this person. Is that one scenario, or did you create this person? 
you know who you marry. Yeah. It's that simple. You know who you marry. But you know, a lot of times they create the man they think they want, mm-hmm. and then he becomes that person. No longer is she in love with them. And here's, here's toxic behavior that backfires on women. <laughs> and I'll tell you, women out there, men don't do this. Women, for good or for bad, will go sit down with their girlfriends and talk about their significant other in excruciating detail. Oh, girl, he does this, he does that. And then on the bad side, he ain't shit because he does this. Ladies, I'm going to help you out, okay? When you go to your girlfriends and you start talking shit, good or bad, about your dude, they are taking notes, and I promise you, they want to fuck your dude. Especially if he's a good dude, and you keep talking about him and saying all the things that... Keep your relationship to yourself. Toxic behavior is you putting your business in the streets. Men, Coach and I never talk about his wife, ever. I know her, and it's, hey, what's up, girl? We don't talk about his wife. No man talks about his girl with his boys at all. I mean, think about it. When you start, when you're dating, oh, you know, we cool. She's cool. That's it. Because you know, you already know this is it. Yeah. Even if you're not there yet, you're like, eh, but you'll talk about if you don't stay together, you'll talk about on the back end. If you decide, you're probably letting it go because it was the back end. Yes. You don't care. You moved on. But when you're in it, nah, we don't talk about that at all. You don't talk about it at all. all. At all. Dudes that most will talk about th- about scenarios that make them happy. Oh, I took a trip with my girl. It was cool. Oh, like when you went on vacation with your, took her to Palm Springs. She's like, oh, dude, I took her to Palm Look at this place we stayed. It wasn't, wasn't about his wife. It was about what he did for his wife. Right. Difference. <laughs> right? <laughs> big, big difference. You know? And when you're another, you know, another toxic trait is women can't be done. And this happens with men and women, but I think it happens with women a lot more. Men, once we're done, we're out. (laughs) There's no vindictive, oh, let me get you back. There's some crazies out there that don't want to let you go because you decided to leave. But if you both decided to leave and this ain't working, a dude ain't chasing you down. He's not coming after you for everything. Yeah. A woman? I agree. As you're saying that, I'm thinking about relationships when I was dating, and I'm like, yeah, no. A dude ain't coming to key your no. car. He's not coming to bust out your windows. He's not putting sugar in your gas tank. He's not doing any of that shit. Because he ain't crazy. Not crazy. He ain't crazy. If he's crazy, he's going to do everything that you just yes, said. Yes, he's going to stalk night. you. He's going to stalk you. He ain't going to yeah. scratch your car. Yeah. He's yeah. going to sit outside your house. Yeah, yeah. If, if he's crazy, he's a stalker. Yeah, different. I, I had a roommate that had a stalker. Dude. It was not good. No. Not good because and, you know what? When he finally moved on, he knew the next girl he was with, mm-hmm. he killed her. It's crazy. So, ladies, protect yourself. Understand, and men out there, dude, when she's done with you, she's done. She don't want you no more. Stop chasing. Yeah. She's when she's done, she's done. Move. Yeah. That's the toxic. F on. That's toxic. That's toxic. When you can't let go, that's toxic. She don't want you. Because you're festering in this negative energy and space that doesn't exist anymore. It's just you. Dude, so here's toxic behavior. (laughs) I just happened to be flipping channels the other day and was watching Steve Harvey's court. Okay. I don't know where I found the time. It was just on. It was on. It's funny. He had a man and a woman. And this woman was suing her dude for expenses incurred over the time frame that he said, one day I'm going to marry you, and the time he actually proposed. Every time she thought, like, if they went on a trip and he didn't propose, because she felt that he might and he didn't, she's suing him for this money. So let me tell you what she was suing him for. All the time she got her hair done, all the time she got her nails done, 
every outfit that she bought to go on a trip. And she thought they were going to, he might have proposed. And so in her mind, she's like, oh, here's the best part. The 24 therapy sessions that she went through because he hadn't proposed yet. Now, she's in court suing his ass for a few thousand dollars, 12,000, whatever. I can only imagine what Steve Harvey. So, dude, he's sitting there looking. Mouth open. And to me, that's toxic behavior, but it gets worse. Steve Harvey's like, so where do things stand now? Oh, we're engaged. So he still asked this broad to marry him. Even though she's, and so he's like, well, y'all are engaged now. He's, she's like, still, I want my money. Yeah. Wow. And because he didn't propose the way she wanted to propose, be proposed to, she didn't, he didn't do it in front of all her friends. He did it because he's like, I'm a private guy. I want, it's not, it's not a show. It's not on social media. It's not a show. It's just me and you. She didn't get the proposal that she thought she was getting. So she's suing him for that shit. So, ladies, that's some toxic shit. But think about it. He asked you to marry him. He asked her to marry him. And they're going to court after. Oh, I didn't get to his toxic part. His toxic part is that MF asked her, asked her to marry him. That means you have no self respect. <laughs> you have no self respect. Right. That's toxic trait. Yeah. 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 Oh, my oh I'm God. getting fired up today. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean that shit's crazy. But here's but here's what gets me too. We're talking about when relationships end. Let's talk about right. that. So right. we've all gone through them. You go through a relationship, it ends, it's over, and when you both agree, that's over. Yeah. <laughs> you both agree. Mhm. Women sometimes and tell me where the lie is. A woman can be cool until she sees your next chick. Mm. And if she sees your next chick and you are treating her better, she feels you're treating her better than she got treated, oh, she's coming after your shit. Because there's no statute of limitations on when she can come after your shit. Mm. Mm. I don't know what that's like. I'm just saying. Yeah. I don't, because I was reading this and it's like, we're having an amicable separation until I do something that may irritate you. Yeah. And then men don't get vindictive and come after your shit. They just want out. <laughs> Women, they're coming after everything. They want, they want you to be miserable because they take that shit personal. Well, I mean, isn't that what's going on with um, Kevin Costner? Yep. That's what's going on with Kevin Costner. You know, and, he, and it's just. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to light into you. No, nope. but, it, but it's <laughs> but it it it's kind of crazy. Now, we talked about this on the podcast. Is attention seeking behavior toxic? You said podcast live. I'm sorry, the live. <laughs> well, because it all streams together. It's our live warm up to the podcast. <laughs> does what does attention. does attention seeking behavior? Is it toxic? Yeah. Who's it toxic to? The person seeking attention or the people giving attention? I think it's toxic to the per person seeking attention. I think it's a personality it's trait a person, that's yeah, shitty. It's a per yeah, because they don't even believe in themselves. It's okay to want attention. It's okay to, it's okay to look at attention and it boosts you. To spend your life seeking attention all the time has got to be exhausting. And that shit's like poison because then it starts to run your life. And that's what we talked about earlier today, like certain trainers on social media and, you know, people who people you always hear people posting things on social media saying, I do this for me. And I heard this one podcast where they were like, well, if you enjoy looking at because we go back and we look at our own social media. Then why don't you just go back and look at your own camera roll? Mm -hmm. If you like if you will only like looking at your pictures, I tell you what, if you posted a picture that you thought was a thirst trap and you got no likes, you would be ruined for the day. Yeah. It's that simple. Uh, we were watching reality TV, mm -hmm. you know, one of them wives, 
that are nobody. Well, you know what's funny about those shows? And it's toxic. All of them are not wives. No. Majority of them are not Words wives. Are not. It's like usually one or two. All right. And the rest be. are just uh, Beverly Tatalons. Hills or yeah, Orange County or yeah, Jersey, Atlanta. Whatever, whatever, Atlanta, Jersey, whatever. But we were talking about how the women dress so hardcore. Like they, they are dialed in on their gear. Excuse me. But it's for each other. Yeah. You know, it's like it's not for the attention outside of it's. It's, it's for the, the attention of the group. people they're with. Yeah, that group. Yeah, I got out, but it's outshining. Yes, again, That's toxic I'm, behavior. I'm trying to be better than you. Yeah. And it goes so far. Oh, girl, that's cute. And then it's like, ugh, this bitch. But think about it. But it goes so far to the point where people, I saw this business where people, he rents out private jets for people to come take Instagram photos. <laughs> making a killing. Dude, <laughs> making a killing where they'll take influencers and let them. I it, would do it. Dude, it never leaves the airport. You come and you just you take your video he'll rent, he'll rent a car and put it by the plane if you want him to mm-hmm. you know and you do your and he's that's, like and and he's that's like that's amazing yeah and he was like I do it because it helps boost an influencer's ability to influence and so they'll pay me he's like I'm doing a good deed it's making people who are not successful look successful but it doesn't help them become successful so what? What's to, Which part of that is toxic? You know, <laughs> like when Pow Wow did that post years ago, like he was getting on a private jet, <laughs> and the guy was on Instagram and took a picture of him sitting right next to. Him. <laughs> he was like, "Oh, really? It's interesting because you sitting in the back of the plane with me." So crazy. What's funny is when people. <laughs> post they're getting on a private jet and they're getting on jet suite x to vegas <laughs> i'm like i got on that same plane last week dog <laughs> with 30 other people that i did not know <laughs> yes it is a great flying experience because i can get to the plane 15 minutes beforehand but it ain't mine <laughs> i did not rent the plane i rented the seat yeah 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 think about it those that guy that owns the plane he's like this is the easiest amount of money I can make. When my plane is on the have, ground? I don't have to pay for gas. I don't have to pay for a pilot. I don't have to pay for a flight attendant. I don't but have to pay but for anything. Thing, he's like, when my plane's on the ground, it's on the ground. Yeah. Come take pictures. Pay me. When I need to use my plane, I get on my plane and go with my pilot. Right. I don't need your money, but shit. Yeah. Let it make money. Man, I'm I am money. not proud yeah. of you. That ain't toxic. Yeah. No. That pay for his flights out. <laughs> yeah. And like fools who... Fools who, and this is all about attention seeking, fools who will go take pictures in front of somebody's car. They don't say shit. They just stand there and take a picture and let social media decide if it's that person's car or not. And all they do is take a picture, hashtag in my bag. (laughs) (laughs) That shit right there. (laughs) Fuck. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, right. Oh my god. Dude. Dude. So who is more toxic, men or women? I you mean, want, there's you, want me, you want me to say? There's it's always a comparison. We always gonna drop it, but what who's more toxic? Women. Okay. And the reason why I say women is because the minute you say toxic masculinity, you're toxic. Yeah. And every woman has called a man toxic because he does something she doesn't like. Right. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's not good for you. It's not poison because you don't like it. You just don't like it. Yeah. It's toxic masculinity if a man is not vulnerable enough, but yet if he's vulnerable, he's a simp. So either way, Damn you're calling him a simp or toxic. There's no in between because you expect us to read your mind. That's some toxic shit. But at the get same, out of your own head. But at the same time, I'm looking for a good man. You ain't looking for a good man because you don't you <laughs> don't know that, what a good but, man is. But you know that's what they always say. Yes. In between the lines. It's toxic to say no good men exist. Y'all scream that shit a lot. All men are trash. Toxic. Mm-hmm. There's no good men out there. I don't need a man. Well, maybe that trash you smell is coming from your own garbage. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
Oh boy, shots, shots fired. fired. Think about that yeah. shit. Yeah. You don't hear men out there saying there are no good women around. Ever. But women Ever. are always crying that there are no good men. Why? Well, Keep seeking the same person. Because your shit stinks. <laughs> yeah. Your shit stinks and you're always looking in the same place. You walk in a circle around yourself. If all the men you date are toxic, you might then you might you. be the toxic one. You might be the toxic one. You might be the poison that's making everybody else die. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, accountability. How about we start there? Men and women alike. Be accountable for your own bullshit. Nobody wants to own their own shit. That's why it's easy to project to others what they think is wrong and right and everything in between. Usually wrong. They think everything is wrong. Because you know, they and, don't want to deal with and themselves. And when people say, you know, ain't no good men out there. And I'll give you ladies this. There are a lot of ain't shit men. There are a lot of men that ain't doing shit, that, are, that don't want to do shit, that sit at home, play video games. But at the end of the day, somebody wants them. That doesn't make them toxic. That just makes them not for you. Mm -hmm. something toxic too is men having a preference and women saying that preference is toxic masculinity you know what's funny you just said men have a preference but women have a to-do list men aren't, men, aren't, men aren't allowed to have a preference but women can but they have this long laundry list. He has to be this, 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 this. Yes, this, this, that's this, their this, preference. This. Because, you know, they don't say it. They don't call it a preference. It's like a to-do list. He has to have what he needs to be able to do. But if a man has a preference, it's, you know, whether it is physical, whether it is body count, whether it is education, whatever his preference is, oh, you're shaming, you're this, you're that, you're toxic. I prefer to have a woman that is feminine, submissive whatever if he says that oh you're just toxic and you just want a slave no, no. i just no. said what i prefer well, you, nobody said they want a slave why can't you why can you have a preference and we can't that's toxic yeah you know and coach and i hate the word toxic so we're getting that shit all out today <laughs> toxic 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 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I hate the word. Hate yeah. the word toxic and I hate the word uh I can't even say it. Triggered and triggered. Yeah. And we haven't and to say that a man's toxic behavior triggers your crazy, I heard that this week. Hmm. Well, you know, it's just when they're acting when they're when they have this this toxicity, then it triggers my behavior. It triggers me to be crazy. No, nah, sweetie, you're, you're, you're crazy. crazy. No. You're you need, crazy and you're the, looking for reasons. To show it to others. Yeah. Yeah. That's Maybe simple. You just need to own your crazy. <laughs> you'll probably you'll probably be less crazy the moment you own your crazy. And despite all of that, you will never hear a man call you toxic. No. We may say you're kind of crazy, but here's the thing. We think most women have a little bit of crazy. Yeah. But that's just... And we call it crazy, and we said this before, everything we don't understand is crazy. That's just that. <laughs> I mean, think about it. And women, it's okay. Women are triggered, triggered, literally triggered. Like when you say, take it easy, relax. Oh, that word relax? Oof. I can't tell you how many people flipped out on me because I said, dude, just relax. It's not that, relax, it's not that serious. Just made it super serious. Yeah. And then if you say, dude, stop acting crazy. Whew. So you know what I always say? What? Well, damn, put a perm on it then. <laughs> <laughs> Most people out there ain't going to know what that is. <laughs> they know it's a well, damn girl. Exactly. <laughs> put a perm on it then. But yeah, but it's just, mm. they get that. And here's the thing. With somebody calling you crazy, if you're not then it won't trigger you. If somebody calls it the movie Roadhouse, mm. I'm going to go back. <laughs> what do I do if somebody calls my mama a whore? Well, is she? What do I do You know, if you call me a bitch? I'm not, so it doesn't affect me at all. Right. But the minute somebody says, why are you acting crazy? If you don't think you're acting crazy or you're not crazy, 
You'd be like, whatever, dude. I mean, think about it. But if you're crazy and you just don't want nobody to know and somebody points out your fucking fault. Yeah. <laughs> Trigger. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Yeah. As black people. Mm-hmm. We've been called. Yeah. Called nigger. All our lives. Yep. Am I that person? No. Nah. I'm not going to be triggered by that word. No. Well, whatever. Whatever, motherfucker. Yeah. You know? That's why you are where you are. Yeah. And I am where I am. Exactly. We as men have way less triggers. We as men have way less toxic behavior, but we're being groomed to be told we're toxic because being masculine is considered toxic. And that's mm-hmm. the problem. You want a man's man, but the minute he's a man's man, you're saying he's toxic. Right. The reason why we're harping on women is because we're two men. We're two. Not only that, <laughs> women are the ones that are always calling something toxic. Men, look at all the billions of videos over time that have been done on any platform. Mm-hmm. You'll never hear an interview talking about female toxicity. Mm-hmm. Why? Is because we just assume that these are just traits that you guys have. These are part of the feminine structure. You guys get emotional on different scales. You guys are ruled by emotion and hormone where we're re- ruled by logic. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. Correct. The masculine and the feminine. Not necessarily man and woman, the masculine and the feminine. Neither one is toxic unless you do dumb shit. I'm not going to call you toxic because you're a woman. Don't call me toxic because I'm a man. I'm not going to call you toxic because you're feminine. Don't call me toxic because I'm masculine. If you don't like toxic masculinity, go find a chick. There you said it. There you said it. I'm done with y'all today. Uh, I'm just saying, oh man. Oh my god! Gosh, you know, I'm just like, <laughs> come on. But I think going back and just leaving this way, accountability, accountability. You got to own up to who you are, where you are, where you want to be. That's it. That's it. That's the only thing you're responsible for. Stop being toxic to others because you don't know where you're at, dude. It's that simple. Stop that shit, y'all. Stop That's me punking you. Stop <laughs> it. Man, where are they going to find you, man? Man, you're going to find me <laughs> at Lanel Hunt. Angry, too. <laughs> Angry. You're going to find me on on IG at, at Lanel Hunt. You're going to find me on the internet at huntspine.com. <laughs> you're going to find us both at SOE underscore podcast on IG. Catch us live every single week on Saturdays. You're going to also catch us on uh, podcast soe.com everything that's coaching it, dot that's it that's it that's it and coach. also coach kj goes on instagram and coach kj.com pretty simple man this is how we do every week we, we out, out.